Hallelujah. It's so good to be here and uh, just to be in the presence of the Lord is such a privilege. My, uh, a couple weeks ago, I, I was just, hadn't felt well all day and I thought, I'm, I just can't wait to get into the presence of the Lord. And I was getting ready and just uh, came out of the kitchen to, in a hurry, and uh, to grab my purse and get in the car and, and I fell, and the doorknob took a hunk out of my arm, <laughs> and uh, uh, I thought, devil, you are a liar. As soon as I get this bleeding stopped, I'm going to church. <laughs> and, and I just couldn't wait to get here, and I, I thought, well, am I going to be safe to drive? And I said, yes, I'm going to be safe to drive. And he kept saying, you shouldn't go. You need to just, you know, take care of yourself. And I said, you hide and watch. I'm going to church. <laughs> anyway, and I came and received from the Lord that night. And God is so good. He's good. He's faithful. He's faithful. And I want to be where he is. <laughs> Uh, I love the song that the uh, pastor wrote. Uh, I want to go where you are, Lord. I want to uh, take me where you are. I don't. You don't need to come to me, but I just take me up a little higher to where you are. And I, I, I just love that song that they sing, where you are. But it, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to talk about. What are you saying? What did you say? <laughs> uh, we all know that the church has been under a siege and going through a siege of the enemy. And you know what a siege is? Uh, what Brother Webster says it's a persistent attempt to gain control. Well, the enemy, he, he just doesn't quit, does he? Well, that's his job, and I guess he does a good job, but I don't commend him for it. <laughs> anyway, so we are God's people, and we know here in RPA that he's a defeated foe. He is a defeated foe, and Jesus said in Luke, the 10th chapter and the 19th verse, Behold, I give you power. To tread on serpents and scorpions, those are poisonous insects that can cause us harm. But the Lord has given us power to tread upon those things, spiritually and physically. I find a scorpion every so often out where I live, and, and the Lord has protected me. I, I went up to my um, pantry door one day, and there was something on the door that and I thought, well, I just wiped that down. I don't know what what's on there. And I took my finger to, to, and flicked it off, and it was a scorpion. <laughs> anyway, it landed on the floor, and I stepped on him. <laughs> God gave me power over him to tread upon him. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I believe that we can take that spiritually also. That that we have we've been given power to tread upon scorpions and, and serpents. And, uh, and we need to always be a, a, on the outlook for things like that spiritually and physically and exterminate those things. Once we see or even suspect, we need to get the, the spray out, the, what do you call it, the DD? <laughs> spray, whatever it is, spray and spray and get rid of those things in our life, and they will come up from time to time because the enemy doesn't he doesn't know the word quit, <laughs> but our praises can knock him out. Hallelujah, and he has given us all power over the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. First John 4 and 4. Now, these are some scriptures that we need to just memorize. We need to write them down and then write them down again and write them down again and put them where we can see them. 
It says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. And the, 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 who is them? It's the Antichrist. It's people that are against the power of God. And he says, greater is he that is in you than in me that is in the world. And we have that privilege to come against that enemy because we know who is within us. Hallelujah. And another one to memorize is Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon, no weapon that is formed against us is going to prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Well, the condition there is whose servant are you? Who are you serving? Are you serving the enemy? Oh, none of us want to serve the enemy, and we would not, we would not serve the enemy for anything. But are we serving ourselves before God? Sometimes we put ourselves first, and if it pleases us, then we'll worship. If it pleases us, we'll go to church. If it pleases us, we will work, we will invite somebody to go with us, and we'll speak to them about the Lord. But we have to be servants of the Lord and do what he has called us to do, and he doesn't hesitate to let us know when you go to him. So this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is the righteousness as of me, saith the Lord. In Revelation 12 and 11, it says, And they overcame him, which is the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. What is your word today? What are you saying? What are you saying? And what the word of your testimony. In Mark, the fifth chapter, we read an account of a woman that had an issue of blood. And let's see what she had to say. She was, had been sick for 12 long years, and she had been to every doctor around, and hadn't, she just got worse. Nothing happened. She spent all of her money. And uh, how many of us have had something sort of like that? <laughs> We've been to this doctor and that doctor, and we've been here and there and trying to find answers to what's going on. But she heard, she heard about Jesus. And there was healing, that he was out healing the sick and afflicted. And her faith took an upward swing because she heard. The scripture says that our faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we all have have the word we all have bibles uh, many of us have many bibles <laughs> and that we so there's no excuse not to hear the word you can hear it on television you can hear it on the radio you can hear it by reading it yourself or you can hear it in church and especially in this church we hear the word and we know that his word is is powerful more powerful than a two-edged sword and we we need to listen to what he is saying and she said the word of god says after she heard that jesus was was there she said she her words were if i could just touch his clothes i will be made whole and then she put it into action she went out where the crowd was, where he was, and she pressed through the crowd in her weakened condition. Sometimes we have to just overcome things by pressing through because the enemy will do everything in his power to hinder us. And she pressed through the crowd against her, her bad feelings, against the rules, against the laws, against everything on the outside and things that people were saying and she touched his clothes and Jesus stopped he was in a crowd and there was many many people that were running into him and touching him and seeking him out but he stopped and I want Jesus to stop I want to touch his clothes I want to touch his heart I want to touch his spirit and I want him to stop we used to go over in, in um, 
Fort Worth, they used to have a big sign that says, stop by here. Jesus, stop by here. Well, I think that we need to pray that to you, Lord, stop by RPA. And I believe that he does just that, because when you begin to praise God, and he begins to uh, inhabit the praises of his people, and he will stop by, and he will reach out to the ones with faith <coughs> and touch them. And when he touches them, it just takes one touch. That's all it takes from the master for us to press through, press through all the obstacles in our life to him and touch him, and he will make us whole. And she touched his clothes, and she was made whole. We defeat ourselves sometimes with our words. Proverbs 6 and 2 says, you are snared by the words of your mouth. So it depends on what you're talking about. What are you saying? you saying, oh, it's too hard. The crowd is too, too dense. Uh, I could never get over there. I don't feel well enough to push through. And I, I just, I'm talking to myself <laughs> as well as you. There's just too many things, and I, I'd rather just stay home tonight or, or today. But we have to press through those things and get them out of the way and, and be determined, have a made-up mind. I'm going to touch him, and we have to declare it. We declare his glory in this place. We declare his victory in this place. We declare our healing in this place. Healing is here. Hallelujah. Victory is here. Hallelujah. There's no defeat in those that serve him because he has won it already. He's already paid the price for it. He bought our healing. He bought our victory. And it's here tonight. He's in this place because we've gathered in his name. And healing is here. And I believe it. And I receive it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so glad that we can just speak those words and confess. If we begin to confess our doubts and fears, they will thrive. They will grow. It's like pouring water on weeds. You don't have to really water them very much for them to grow. And they will take over before you know it. I was in out the other day, and, and there were some little tiny weeds, and I thought, oh, they'll be all right. And <laughs> Before long, I got a, a notice from the office, take care of your weeds. <laughs> anyway, I had to have somebody help me come and pull them out and get them out of there because they do multiply, and they do make a, a nuisance of their self. But I want to say with uh, David... Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's not magnify our problems. Let's not magnify our sicknesses. Let's not magnify the things that the enemy brings our way. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's not water those weeds. Let's get rid of them. And let's exalt his name. Hallelujah. Jesus knew that someone had touched him when the little lady touched his clothes. And he said, who touched me? Well, she came to him and, and confessed it was me, Lord. I, I touched you because I knew if I could touch you that everything would be okay. And he said, thy faith, daughter, has made you whole. And that was, that's where her faith came because she heard hallelujah if we can help people to hear god is omnipresent and his power is everywhere and we just need to realize that we can plug into it because his power is here and we have to take that plug and plug it in to what he has for us he's given us the power of the holy ghost to plug into his healing presence and his deliverance and his supply He's made available to all of his children. We need to believe and speak what he said. In Matthew, the 19th chapter, he said, All things are possible to them that love God. In Mark 19, 23, Jesus said, thou, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. If it wasn't for God's... It, 
God's will to heal us, why would he have gone to the cross and paid such an awful price for our healing? And he did just that. We can pray the word. We can speak the word. Um, my brother, a few years back, was he's a hunter, and, and he was out hunting, and he had come up, climbed up a, a real steep embankment, him and whoever he was hunting with, they had come up, and he was the last one. And he got up to the top and was holding on to a limb to help him get over, and the limb broke. And he fell. He fell first, he fell 50 feet, and he hit in a, a bunch of brush. And it was like a springboard, and it just sprung him over another 100 feet. And he landed at the bottom of this terrible place. And, um, they didn't think they could even get him out of there that day, and uh, they they didn't they couldn't hear him they couldn't couldn't tell what was going on, and they tried to make some kind of a, a conveyance to to get him out if they could, and they went down in there but they called the family together, and my parents of course were prayer warriors, <laughs> and they did they just uh, they wouldn't turn loose. And they began to pray. And the Lord impressed me to pray Romans 8 and 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And I began to just pray that and pray that and pray that. And my dad had a dream that night. And he dreamed that he had David, my brother, over his shoulder. And that he was walking through the woods and that there was a, a um, funeral parlor on, on one side, and he knew if he could get past that, that David would be okay because they didn't think he was going to live when they finally got him out. And because all the bones in his face were broken, <laughs> and he, he was in terrible condition. But we began to pray, and I, I called other people, let's pray the word, let's pray the word because it's powerful. The word is powerful, and we begin to pray that. And he made it through, and he's alive today. <laughs> Praise God. There's not very many people that fall 150 feet over a cliff that, that survive even in the first place. And, and when JJ began, when she had her episode, and I began to pray for her, God, help JJ. God, help JJ. And that's all I could think of. Help JJ and help Nancy and help JJ. And I just kept praying that. And the Lord stopped me. And he said, what do you want? I said, I want her life and I want her health. I want her to come back to us. And the Lord reminded me of Romans 8 and 2. And I began to pray for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. And no, no, it wasn't long until I got the word, she's awake. Praise God, praise God. We have seen a miracle. We've seen the dead come back to life because uh, there was no hope for her. And God is so good. We need to speak that word. We need to, to let him know that we are aware that he paid the price and he made it possible. Praise God. That price that he paid and he cried, it is finished. And that meant he paid in full for, for our healing, for our salvation, for whatever we need. And so we can go to him at any time. Over in the Old Testament, in 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter, there when Goliath was there and, and he was facing the children of Israel, and David was just a little young person. His dad had sent food to his brothers in, that were in the army there. And here comes Goliath. And David said, he said in his heart, who is this that's coming against the armies of the living God? Who is this? Who does he think he is? And, you know, we have a God that's greater, and we don't have to put up with this. And he went over to Saul, and he said, I'll fight him. And he was just a lad. And he, he said, I will fight him, 
and Saul tried to put his armor on him and everything because none of the other people, they were all too afraid and fear was, had them bound up. But David said, I will fight him. And so he got his little slingshot and, and the stones, the five smooth stones we read about. And he said, <clears throat> in verse 32, he said, uh, he told Saul that he would find him. And then in verse 37, he told him, the Lord delivered me out of the paw of the lion and of the bear. He says, you know, he was out taking care of the sheep and he was insignificant as far as family was concerned, but he knew God. And when the lion and the bear came after the sheep, he was strong in the Lord. He was strong in the Lord, and the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord came on him, and he defeated the lion and the bear. And he said, he will deliver me out of the hands of this Philistine. And then in verse 45, he went out after him, and he ran toward that giant. And he said, you come to me with a shield and a sword, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we have that name. That name is ours to use. We've taken his name. Almost every one of us in here have been baptized in the name of Jesus. We've taken that name. And we have it because it gives us power. There's power in that name. And then we have the, ar the armies of he says, who are you to come against the armies of the living God? God will deliver you into my hands. And hallelujah. And the, the, the giant was angry because such a little boy would come up and, and dare to come against him. But it doesn't matter how your age, what your age is. It doesn't matter what you look like. It doesn't matter how tall, how short, and how big. Whatever, God is on your side, and we can defeat the enemy no matter what. There's no specifications of how old you are or anything, but God is on our side, and we, we can come against the power of the enemy. The giant fell. We all know the story. How he, he, he put a stone in the sling and, and hit that giant, and down he went. And, but you know what? The big giants will fall. And we sing that song. We all love it. And when the praise team sings, giants fall. But there's one thing that we need to do that David did. He went up and cut his head off. You know, he didn't leave him just laying there. And we just have to cut him off, cut that head off and not allow anything else. We don't give any place to the devil. In Ephesians 4.27, we don't make room for the enemy to rise up and repeat what he's been doing. Because we have power through the power of the Holy Ghost. We make no room for the devil. We don't make room for a repeat visit. Our praises to God keeps God's presence surrounding us. He's here tonight. I feel like those who need to plug in to the power source that is in this room right now. Today is the day of salvation. Salvation includes our healing. Salvation includes our supply. It, 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 our deliverance, uh, our redemption is in the, in the blood of Jesus. <coughs> Scripture said today is the day and now is the accepted time. He's here to heal tonight. He's here to deliver. He's here to, if we will step out and claim it in the name of Jesus. He paid the full price. And we have that privilege to come to him tonight. And if there's anybody here tonight that needs a special touch from the Lord, I'd like you to come forward because his spirit is right here. Hallelujah. His spirit is here to do what you need. If you need a healing in your body, just stand to your feet. We will all pray with you. We will all defeat the enemy in the name of Jesus because that is paid for in full. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Talking about a night that's been orchestrated by God, this is truly it. Uh, especially that word given. And your sermon, uh, my sermon tonight, 
is a uh, one is part of my testimony. I'm going to give you a praise report first of all. It's been six years in the making. Um, God has brought me through. <laughs> yeah, God has brought me through um, a lot in six years. Um, not only have I been trying to get disability, but I've been through a lot in six years through the struggle of all of that. Um, but the gist of the whole thing, I won't go into the details of it, but my disability has been approved. Um, the, the, um, the judge actually called me today along with Social Security. She had, after six years of, of a horrific fight, she fully approved me completely. Um, then Social Security called me today. Uh, I don't know why they called me, but I had to go through an interview with them to see if I qualified for not only disability, but for Social Security income. They did not qualify me for that, but they are going to give me two months of back pay for Social Security income, and they are giving me six years of back pay for disability. <laughs> so praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So now let me just tell you what God gave me since Pastor talked to me and asked me to preach. And to show you, let me just show you what, how good God is. Mother Morgan, God gave you that message and then the Lord gave you that. God gave me this. The title of this tonight is, it, here's a revelation for you all to see how God, how God is. He gave me this message tonight called, and this is a revelation for you all, victory in Jesus. Right. Tell me God's not good. <laughs> There's nothing more exciting than winning. <laughs> there just isn't. There just isn't. You know, I've been praying for healing for not only for myself, but for Eric and for many other people. And I was telling Brother Ty on the way here that I was talking to Eric today, and he's really struggling. And I know a lot of you don't know what's all going on with him, but he's been having a lot of problems with his legs. They're swelling up huge. And they can't even, he can't even bend his legs anymore. And he's having to wear compression hose and all kinds of stuff. And... Uh, I'm just really believing that God's going to heal him. Yes. Hope I can get through this tonight. But my heart breaks. And God said to me, there's victory in Jesus' name. And I still believe God's going to heal him. And I believe God's going to heal me. So tonight, God gave me this. And to live into victory... There's a seven-step process. And when he gave this to me, it convicted me to the core because I failed it myself. It's impossible to live in a victorious life if we go around with gloom beads hanging off of us or if we go around speaking negativity or if we keep telling everybody how we're feeling or when somebody asks you, how are you feeling? And all you say is, I'm doing fine. And you don't tell them the truth. And God convicted me on that because all I would do is tell everybody, I'm doing great. And yet you don't really tell them how you are feeling so they can pray for you and lift you up. And I kept telling the Lord, I don't really want people to know how I'm feeling. And God said, well, if you don't tell them, how are they going to know? How are they going to be able to support you? And of course, you know, you can't argue with God. And I just said, Lord, I would rather just take it up with you because as far as I'm concerned, you're the only one that needs to know. And the Lord just convicted me on that. He says, it's not for you to know. You need to tell them so that they can lift you up and so that they can be healed themselves. And I'm like, huh? And he says, listen to me. It isn't about you. It's about them. Prayer. Prayer. They need to practice. They need to be healed. I'll take care of you. So let me give you this. In 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 57, 
Thanks be unto God, for he gives you the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 John 5, 4. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 1 John 5, 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth in Jesus, the Son of our God? You know, there's an old saying that says, you are what you eat. The same is true of our lives. I kept asking myself, well, what do you mean, Lord? If you're defeated in your thought life, and what you say, and what you hear, and you're taking that in, and you're speaking that, there's your answer right there. But if you surround yourself in the Word of God and what you hear and you speak yes. that, and your life is filled with positivity, yes. you're going to be what you think and what you hear and what you speak. So if you eat and breathe the Word of God and you speak it, your life is going to show it. The seven steps of your victory. And the word victory, V, is vigilance. What are you vigilant in? Are you vigilant in your prayer life? Are you vigilant in your reading of your word? Are you standing fast on the word of God? Fierce pretty five eight. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, he's out to destroy your life. In the six years that I've been suffering and going through this fight and this battle, and I'll tell you, there's more than just praying about this. I've been in and out of courts. I've been fighting with lawyers. You all just have no clue the stress that this has been putting upon me. I think I've done more work than the lawyers have. I've done more foot ground. I mean, they've even, I even had to go five years back in my income taxes, and they wanted me to spend $4,000 in having my income taxes redone. How are you supposed to do that when you have no income? I prayed and prayed, God, how, how am I going to do this? And you know what? God came through, and somebody did it for me for free. Romans 13, 4. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Be watchful. Be on guard. I'm telling him, this is a spiritual paranoia. But it is a healthy thing. It really is. Don't feed the lion. Don't give him your flesh. Because what we, what we speak... What we think is part of your flesh. It really is. The letter I. Imagine the consequences. Imagine the consequences. Ecclesiastics, chapter 8, verse 11 through 13. Because the sentence against evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in the evil set in them to do evil. Verse 12. Through a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged. Yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear God, which fear before him. 13. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall be prolonged his days, which are as a shadow because he feareth not God. The letter C, cry out to God. Believe me, I did a lot of that. I did a lot of that. Psalms 34, 6, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, saved him out of his troubles. Hallelujah. I tell you tonight, hallelujah. You have no idea. When the word came through in the letters that came in the mail, when I got back from my trip, I had myself a little praise. I had myself a little shout. I had myself a little Pentecostal dance. And then I fell to the ground and I had a cry. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto the Lord and I will answer thee. And I shew thee a great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And when pastor gave that word tonight, I believe that we're on a threshold of more victory. I think we haven't even begun to see what God's going to do. 
cry out when tempted after you fail and throughout your day. T, take your thoughts into captivity. When you begin to think something negative, grab a hold of it and say, oh no, get thee behind me, devil. Just like Mother Morgan. <laughs> no, you're a liar, Satan. 2 Corinthians 10 through 5. For we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down, suppressing imaginations, thoughts, and every high thing that exalted itself after the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. Temptation comes after the serpent in the garden, saying, ye shall not die. You'll become gods if not dealt with it immediately. Thoughts become desires which turn into actions which produces habits that become into your life. The most dangerous form, and I, can't, I, I had to really think about this, the most dangerous form of LSD out there in the world today, lust, sin, and death. Think about it. And I thought to myself, God, what all does that fall under? And he said, every thought falls under LSD. Everything you speak, everything you hear, every negative thought will fall under LSD. Your lust, your sin, and the death of your life. And I'll tell you what, when God gave me this, I just, all I could do was cry and weep. And I thought, God, that just sums up our life. If we don't submit ourselves to you, every single one of us are guilty of taking LSD. The letter O, omnipresence of God. Are we surrounded by the omnipresence of God? Genesis 39, 7 through 9. And it came to pass that after these things, that the master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master rotteth not, that with this the men in the house, and he hath committed all that he had to his my hand. And there is none greater than this in the house, that I have neither hath kept back anything from me, that he, from me but with thee, because that thou art his wife. How then can I do be the great weakness in the sin against God? His omnipresence means that he has said it all. He sees it all. His omnipresence means he knows it all. And his omnipresence means he's big enough to deal with it all. And when we sin as his children, he sees it all. Psalms 139.2 says, Thou knowest my downsettings, mine uprising, thou understandings my thought from afar. Don't think you can hide anything from God. But you know, God respects us enough and charges us enough to be responsible. He expects you to get yourself under control as well. Why do you think he gave you a choice? The letter R, rely on the scripture. Stand by the word of God. I've had to do that all my life. It was ever since I became a Christian, there's one thing that I've never doubted, and that's the word of God. Even through everything I've been through, and I won't go into details with all my life. I mean, pastor knows a little bit of our struggles 
he doesn't know everything about me. There's one thing that I've always been, and that's been very private about my walk with Christ and everything that I've been through. And one day I'll put everything down on paper. But there was a time in my life that I struggled extremely, extremely bad. And I even doubted the existence of God. And I was going through a very rough time in my life, and I pretty much got on my knees and said, I don't believe that he's real. And I yelled out to God, and I said, you know what, I give up. Literally sold my soul to, the, to, to Satan. I said, I'm done with this. But you know what? God knew my heart. He visited me that night in my bedroom. And that was the night that he filled me with the Holy Spirit in my room. And that was the night that God became very real to me. And I've never doubted him since. And even through all of this that I've been through in all my life and all the trials and tribulations, I've never turned my back on God. I've never doubted my faith in him. Sure, we struggle. Sure, we have doubts. But he's never turned his back on me. I say to you tonight, memorize, meditate, don't give up. I don't care how hard it is. Believe me, I've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. I'm sure you've been through a lot. I don't know his story. He doesn't know my story. But if the devil has been after him long enough to take his praise away, believe me, he's been after me long enough to walk away. But he didn't take his praise away, and he didn't take my life away. And he didn't take y'all's life away. So that tells me enough that God is faithful, and he'll bring you through. And the revelation that God gave me, and if y'all don't know it by now, there is victory in Jesus. Memorize. Meditate. Chew on this. Joshua 1st 8. Meditate. Meditate. In the Hebrew, it means chew the cud. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such is the common to man. But God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. But will with temptation also make every, every way to escape every way to escape he made my way that you may be able to bear it you don't always feel like you have a way to bear it God will bring the verses to your mind when you need it the Holy Spirit will make you remember all of his words when you need it the Bible is your sword it is your weapon when you need it Pick it up. Use it. Cut your negative words in half. It is a double-edged sword. Resist him. Resist the negative words. The letter Y. Yield to the Spirit. Romans 8.13 For if we live by the flesh, you die by the flesh. But if you live through the Spirit, you what? To modify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Whatever God says to do, there's one thing I've learned to do, and that's do it. Because <laughs> when you fight it, what happens? Oh, just, just do it. Just do it. Just do yourself a favor. Just do it. You can't argue with God. You know what I mean, because if you argue with God, believe me, you're going to struggle even more. Just do it. Just do yourself a favor. Just do it. It's a lot better that way. You know, in order, in order to have power over sin, the easiest thing to do is just do it. Don't walk away. Don't fight it. You know, you have to have victory in your life. You want a simpler life? To get the victory, just do these steps. Just make your life easier. Just make it simpler. <laughs> just make up your mind and have victory. Have faith in your life. Just make up your mind. It, you either going to do it or you ain't going to do it. And if you ain't going to do it, then don't be complaining about it. <laughs> Dollar is really to it. Just stop complaining. 
don't, don't be going to the staff and saying, you know, boo-hoo and hoo and hoo -hoo just don't, just keep your mouth shut. Seriously. I mean, I've learned that if I'm going to have problems in my life, not to complain about it, because it was my choice. It, it, it was my choice. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all peace and joy in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you relying on the Holy Ghost? Are you reading the Word of God and meditating? Are you praying? Are you, are you seeking God's face? Are you, when's the last time you were on your face before God? When was the last time that you have veiled in prayer? When was the last time that you sobbed before God? When was the last time you prayed for your kids and your family? When was the last time you were praying for your neighbor? When was the last time that you prayed for somebody's healing? When was the last time you prayed for your pastor? When was the last time you prayed for your church body? When was the last time you prayed for the staff? When was the last time you prayed for yourself? You know it is okay to pray for yourself. Y'all do know that, right? God knows I, I, I try not to pray for myself because I don't want to feel vain. But God told me one night when I was in prayer, he convicted me. He said, you pray a lot for everybody else, but when are you going to lift yourself up? He said, you need to re renew yourself too. So I do. I just, like I, before service tonight, I said, Lord, I, I can't do this without you. You have to be, you have to be in this service. And of course, look what he's doing. This was, if this service wasn't ordained, you tell me. This was totally constructed by God. Like Pastor Sermon one time, and I still remember it. He's the architecture. You can't tell me he's not. We have to have hope. And we have to live in victory. I don't want to fall into the hands of a doctor without hope. I don't want to fall into the hands of a lawyer without hope. I don't want to fall into the hands of a ministry without hope. More and more and more. Go on and go on. But I will tell you this. My hope relies on Jesus Christ. My hope is in the Holy Spirit. We serve the God of all hope. Not a God of defeat. Not a God of negativity. Not a God of pessimism. Not a God of delusion. We have hope and beyond. We have a blessed assurance. Psalms 98 and 1. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. For he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him the victory. You can live in doom and gloom all you want. You can live your life surrounded in whatever you want. I choose to live it in hope in Jesus Christ. You know, David never allowed himself to focus on his problems. But David will never be remembered as a bluegrass singer. <clears throat> David had his bumps in life, sure he did. We all do, at least I do. <laughs> David had his battles in life, David had his failures in life, David had his difficulties in life. David wept, David mourned, but David learned to live in praise. Now, I have a lot more, but I don't have time. But I want to tell you tonight, I want you to be encouraged that the revelation is a reminder for you to, to know and understand something. There is victory in Jesus. And the answer to all of this is, is what do you choose tonight? What do you choose tonight? Do you choose to live in victory through Jesus or do you choose to live in doom and gloom? So I say to you, meditate, memorize, 
and depend on Jesus. Lift your eyes unto the hills and know that victory belongs to us all. Six years through all of this, and yet Jesus proved himself. And that word given through pastor tonight from the Lord not only convicted me, and it was to me, I know, but it just made me realize that the word that God gave me and the word that God gave Mother Morgan made me realize that the Lord knows what he's doing. And everything that he did tonight, you need to understand something, that what he's going to do Sunday is just one more step closer to what he's going to do in the future.